our uh, next speaker, uh, Brother Abu Musab Wajdi Akari. I would ask him to come and present on the topic, Is Your Home a War Zone? So let's hear from him, inshallah. It's ironic that uh, we were made to stand and do some exercise because I had a joke prepared uh, for that dimness. Because, you know, by default, during any lecture, at least 15% of the people fall asleep. Okay? It, maybe you haven't noticed, the speakers notice, the audience doesn't, not, don't necessarily notice. And so I was going to say the, the lighting effect will surely help those who are sleeping uh, to continue sleeping, and I cannot pick on them. Because the, the rule is when someone is sleeping, you kind of wake them up with a question. And then they're like, what? what? Said, Brother Yellow, we're waiting for the answer. So they will never fall asleep in a lecture again. However, that was ruined right now, which is fine. Uh, but speaking of the topic, uh, subhanAllah, I guess the, whenever you bring a bunch of uh, presenters, speakers, lecturers, scholars, people of knowledge in one location, um, you get to share or learn from their experience. And there are always common issues that every person involved in da'wah, whether at a large scale and public speaking or on a smaller scale in some sort of private situation, there are always commonalities or issues that we often hear. And uh, due to this, I've personally probably delivered the most lectures from among all the topics. Perhaps 30% or 40% go to this particular topic. Issues of marital uh, conflicts. One of them was called domestic confrontations uh, because of the, uh, how often we come across uh, issues between new Muslims, old Muslims, uh, married couples from every background, every culture. This is a common epidemic. And finding solutions for that is more challenging because people often want magical solutions. Couples who have a problem come with you expecting whoever that person to give them a magical solution. Just give me a few words and solve my problem. Or the, the, the lady, for example, the, the wife, wants to share her problems with the speaker or the sheikh. And without hearing the husband's point of view, he's supposed to tell her how things are going to be resolved. And realistically speaking, this can never happen. This is why the main objective is to address this issue and eradicate this problem before it reaches the point of no return. Quick solutions, they might or might not work. Magical solutions surely do not work. Unless Allah decrees something that this Marital problem is resolved instantly. A slap on the face, as mentioned, might do the job. How often does it happen? Allahu A'lam. But realistically, let's go back a few steps and see why is it that our homes are a war zone when the ayah which was cited earlier suggests the opposite. That Allah Azza wa Jal, He has made out of our homes sakanan. And then that was commented on. Second, even when those who learn Arabic, you have fatha, dhamma, kasra, and sukun. Sukun is that silent sound that suggests tranquility, relaxation, peace of mind. War zone is the exact opposite of that. The only reason why we have an issue, or I would say two reasons in my personal humble opinion. Tim, humble, humble. No, no, nothing intended. <laughs> is first, our lack of understanding of the divine revelation. We really don't implement Islam. We speak about it. We praise it. We communicate according to the guidelines. But we don't truly internalize the divine instructions when it comes to how a husband and wife should treat each other. And the second reason is we don't know our roles. The father, the husband doesn't know his role, what it entails, his rights, and what is expected for him from, in terms of his wife, and vice versa. Then go further into father with children, or mother with children, and vice versa. And we can go on and discuss further how there's miscommunication between the various family members that result in these disasters at home. So the house can become a war zone. The husband is fighting with the wife. And the siblings are fighting amongst each other. And that son doesn't speak to his mother. And that father doesn't speak to that daughter because she got married without his permission. 
And you hear crazy stories. Stories that you will not expect an Islamic household to have. But sadly, they are all over the place. So then let us be very efficient due to the time efficiency as well and discuss these two topics. First and foremost, what are the divine instructions in regards to this relationship? Allah Azza wa Jal, with the eloquent speech of the Quran, the words of Allah, cannot be ex explained or elaborated on enough because they hold meanings beyond that. We can make an attempt. But the choice of words is magnificent. When Allah Azza wa Jal says that, Hunna libasun lakum, wa antum libasun lahun, for example, that the women are clothing for the men, and the men are clothing for the women. What is that supposed to mean? I mean, you can read this in a passive manner, say, okay, that sounds nice. But pause for a little bit. The clothing which you have on right now, primarily give you a peace of mind and security. You leave the house with clothing that make you comfortable. Besides the fact that they are covering the nakedness, which if we didn't have, you would not be able to come here. If you had no clothes, you would not come out of the house unless you're crazy. And you know, crazy people exist. They go to naked beaches and stuff like that. Alhamdulillah, Islam is so much against these type of things that this is just unexpected from a Muslim couple to be at such location, uh, you know, seeing other people like that, let alone them themselves. So the clothing allow you to come out and be comfortable. And so the spouses have to provide the same type of feeling, the same type of foundation to each other. If we don't feel this way, then it is as if someone is leaving the house without clothes on. How, how much insecurity will be involved? Lack of confidence. Lack of success. So many obstacles will be presented because the person left the house with no clothes or suddenly lost their clothes. Similarly, when the couples are not such to each other, then within the household, they will lead that same life. They will have the same insecurities. And this is why it was mentioned, the threat of divorce. This is why they threaten each other with divorce. Because there's insecurity. There's no compatibility between the two. So why were these ayat revealed? And why did the Prophet ﷺ marry so many women? Besides the fact that this is a right that Allah gives to the Prophets, and no human being has the right to object and say, how come the messenger did this? How come the messenger did that? Subhanallah. Do we know better than Allah what is suitable for His messengers? Who were given the responsibility of sharing the revelation with people so that they are guided and admitted to paradise? Do you understand the magnitude of these words? To come and criticize a prophet or a messenger for actions? Because we hear some Muslims make such criticism. He married so many women, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, amongst the fundamental reasons is that we have vast experience, plenty of feedback for us to understand. The implementation of these ayat in the household of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So you hear and you read the hadith, and this is why knowledge is light. Without knowledge, we will never know. We will have plenty of assumptions. But if we read the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, any one of us, any man in this, amongst this audience or anywhere in the world, if we read the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, we will stand and admit that we are far behind. With tremendous shortcomings. In regards to how he conducted himself and how we conduct ourselves. And with all due respect to the sisters, the same applies. The wives of the Prophet ﷺ versus the women of today. And that leads me to the second aspect of the discussion. First, let us understand the divine principles. This requires study. This study is facilitated. Courses are held. Existing courses can be studied. Consultation is available as we heard here 
for those who need it. Something has to be done so we can learn. When we learn and apply, there will be no issues. And truly, many examples were given of how one word, one word, be it positive or negative, can either construct a castle or destroy a, a country. A single word. So we have to be diplomatic. The men have to be diplomatic. The women have to be diplomatic. It doesn't mean we compromise. But it means we look at the situation. We understand in Islam the masalih and the mafasid, the benefits and the harm. Surely, I have a right to say this word. But the harm which may result from this is huge. I keep my mouth sealed. We use wisdom. This is understanding, learning the divine principles and guidelines. No two Muslim couple learn and apply will face issues inshallah. The second aspect is the role. This is the most sensitive topic, I believe, personally, in this era, in this age of feminism. We are bombarded with feminism. Men have become scared. Not the sister's favorite topic. I understand. But Islam instructs us to say the truth. Yes, we, uh, we use it, we say it wisely, but we have to say the truth. And the truth is in the Quran. Al-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم سبحان الله. Let us open this debate. Men are the guardians. Men are the responsible party, or you can say men are the caretakers of women. Because of what Allah has favored some over the other, and because of what they spend from their wealth. If the husband and wife understood this ayah, there will be no issues insha'Allah. What we see today is the sister, the wife wants to be the man. And the man wants to be the woman. And it just doesn't work. It does not work. It will never work. Because at some point in time, it will fail. If it started like this, it will fail at, the end, at some stage during the marriage. This does not give the brother the green light to open up his own dictatorship in the house. It says, oh, Allah said, I am the qawwam. I am the guardian, therefore, and then he now has military rule in the house. Which is what many men do. And many sisters suffer due to this behavior of these men. Then they say, we are applying the Quran. No, akhi, you're not. You're applying your own interpretation of the ayah that is suitable and in agreement with your own character and choices. So yes, while we have a level of authority, it is meant to maintain and manage the household like any business. Can you, have you ever worked in a business where there was no manager? Can a business function with no manager? No way! Because every employee has his own way. Wallahi, I think today I'll come at 12 o'clock. And I leave at 1.30. I mean one and, one and a half hours of work. Not like 12 in the morning and 1.30 at night. If there were no managers, people will come up with their own rules. There has to be a decision maker. And in the household, the man has been made to be the decision maker. After consultation, after consideration... After showing the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ, the best among you are those who are best to their spouses. This is why we cannot take one part of Islam and ignore the other ones. If you want to use the ayah, الرجال قوامون على النساء, okay, أخي, come here then and now act upon this hadith. So when there was a conflict between the spouses of the Prophet ﷺ. Because of the jealousy of Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And of course she would be jealous over the messenger of Allah. And every woman is jealous over her man. We know that sisters are not fascinated by the idea that her husband will take a second wife. 
not something that they would be very excited about. We understand. Something Islam allowed for a lot of good reasons, provided that the brother handles business properly. And because a lot don't. There's no justice. And then they wind up wronging both spouses. The existing wife and the new one which joined the crowd. But if we want to apply one at the, the, the uh, jealousy of Aisha, how was it dealt by the Prophet ﷺ? When one of his other wives sent some food during her time in her household. That's a, that's a no-no. And she broke the plate. Uh, uh, the average man will make a big fuss. And as we heard, Talik, huh? you're divorced. Yalla, go to your mother's home. Go to your father's home. I don't want to see your face for the next two years. The Prophet ﷺ said, your mother has become jealous. Fix the situation up. Make up for the plate. Send some fix. He dealt with it in the most wise and passionate and merciful way. This is his understanding, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of the ayat which were revealed upon him. So, my brother, as a husband, these are the two ayat. If we, we can cite many, by the way, but we all know that you hear them frequently when discussing this topic. But these are the two main. Personally, I think if we balance between them, there will be no issue for the husband. You are the caretaker, but you have to do it as the Prophet ﷺ did it. If you take only one side, your boat is going to sink. And for the sisters, you are for your husband the most important asset in his life. Because the well-being of his children has to do with you. The well-being of his household has to do with you. The well-being of his job has to do with you. All of these elements are actually with the wife. How many men have lost their jobs because of a domestic issue? He's upset with his wife. He goes, screams at his manager. He says, okay, out. Goes back home without a job. Why acting macho at work? Because of fighting with the wife. If there's no harmony between them, the children come out oppressed. So you are very important for your husband. Therefore, look after yourself. Let him feel secure. What men want is security. He wants to be able to leave, close the door, and not think for a split second about anything being violated in, re in regards to his wealth, his property, and yourself. This is the key to most men. Make sure that you have it. And secondly, remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Each one of you is a shepherd and he will be responsible for those under his care. So look after your house. That means you maintain yourself. I have addressed this in other lectures if you want to listen to them. Uh, dealing with this topic. Trying to remember, before marriage and after marriage. There are two lectures on YouTube. One is titled Before Marriage and one is titled After Marriage. Explaining the preparation before marriage and then after marriage, how to fix the issues. And a lot of it have to, have to do with the preparation on the part of the man and the wife. So look after yourself. Look after your husband. Look after your children. And fear Allah Azza wa Jal in regards to this household. Be careful of admitting in shayateen. These shayateen can come in the form of wild movies, music. So many things provide an environment that is fertile for evil. And then it becomes, the angels will part, they will leave. The angels do not remain in places. We know the angels do not remain in these homes. No dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, only shayateen. The angels will leave and when the shayateen are working, this is when you're constantly having problems. So we need to clean our households from evil. And with this, inshallah ta'ala, we turn off the alarm and we conclude the talk. Jazakumullah khairan for your patience and for hearing me and hearing the other speakers. Hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad.